Every great city lives and breathes through its railway. And for Sydney, Australia's biggest city, the heart is Central Station. Yeah, this is the office, all right. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Every day is a different scenario. We've only got two minutes. Let's uh, load from the front. And the brains of it all, the Rail Operations Centre. Sydney Train Security. The Rock. It's born from security control. Who's this? Yeah, police. Uh, we've got an incident. Play forward. I can see if you can see anything suspicious. This is the network like you've never seen it before. Another day in the life of the railway. All right, guys, let's go. Please remain behind the yellow line at all times. Coming up... Signs are wrong. The signs are wrong. A peak hour breakdown has staff under the pump. You in the public eye, the eyes of the customers are all on you. Definitely it's stressful. Night shift at Central. <laughs> what happens after dark at Sydney's busiest station? Put it on your ears, though, right? And a serious assault, but the victim has vanished. I'm stunned. <laughs> The Sydney Rail Network is a complex, interconnected machine. Nine intersecting lines across 1,600 kilometres of track, servicing a city of five and a quarter million people. Line on platform seven goes to City Circle via Town Hall. Maintaining that network, the tracks, the trains, the power lines, cost one and a half billion dollars a year and never stops, day or night. But sometimes the maintenance creates problems of its own. Overnight at Circular Quay, a milling machine has been grinding defects off the rails. But at six o'clock this Friday morning, it's broken down on the tracks. Right at the start of the morning peak. Sydney trains. So the track vehicle is a, a high rail milling machine, they call it. So this vehicle's equipped to run on the tracks or alongside the tracks. Duty control manager, Peter, is watching at the rail operations centre. So it's blocking the track, it's stopping the trains. We can't run completely from central to central via the city out of via Circular Quay. But until this thing gets moving, we cannot run at all around the city circle via the outer line. Normally, the machine would be taken off the rails, but with the breakdown, a modified truck has been brought in to tow it along the tracks. The plan is to pull it three stops to Central, but that journey will take 20 minutes, completely shutting the line in the meantime. It's going to affect the morning peak hour significantly as we speak, uh, as it's traversing to Central. We were into peak hour, so it has taken effect. That's affecting the city circle trains, it's affecting the western trains, and it's also affecting the airport trains and the Bankstown and the uh, Reesby services. It is certainly a big deal, and it's escalating from a significant incident level two to a level three. This is the last train to get through before the lines shut. That train is 16 Bravo. It's a Litcom service and it's running 40 minutes late. As the milling machine crawls through St James Station on its way towards Central, it's dragging problems with it. The train on platform 18 goes to Blacktown via... Central is Sydney's busiest station. Platform 23, where it's headed, can expect 13,000 passengers between 8 and 9am. Just restricting, covering, copy. Hey, Fekko. Duty manager Buck is already anticipating crowding issues. Looking at what's going to happen, this might take some time to fix. So I want to go up to Platform 22, 23, get our staffing levels up to scratch for what we need and what we're going to face soon as we're coming up to peak hour. Platforms 22 and 23 service the airport line 
They're already full of anxious, waiting travellers. Oh, I'd say probably a couple of thousand, easy. And uh, look, it, it's unfortunate, these things do happen. It's a machine, you know, machines require maintenance, they break down. Um, we're doing our best voice announcements and keeping our customers updated. Um, so it is what it is. With the milling machine still only at Museum Station, the line remains blocked. The crowding is only going to get worse. While Buck deals with Platform 23, Incident Rail Commander Luke is arriving for the start of his shift. Yeah, this is the office, all right. <laughs> a big office. Yeah, it's a great job. Never a dull moment in this position. Every day is a different scenario. He's one of 37 Incident Rail Commanders, or IRCs, on call 24-7. So the incident rail commander takes care of everything. They call us, there's an incident such and such. I mean, we get in there and we kind of keep everything moving. So we just got to be ready to respond to any situation that happens. Look, I'm up for anything. I'm, I'm a bit of an action man, so I don't mind getting my hands dirty at times. Yeah, mate, about three minutes away, OK? No problem. It's just a Concord Road, just turn it off. 80% of Sydney's rail network is controlled from the rock but they also need people on the ground when serious incidents happen. Right now, they're watching one live on CCTV. Try and go to 125 Lima, go ahead. All right, stand by. Nim North, I've got the uh, go to 125 Lima and uh, police communications on the phone requesting uh, that uh, 125 Lima remain on hold for a stabbing on the train. There's been a violent attack. The Rock needs an IRC on scene urgently. Hi, Luke, it's Melissa. We've got a stabbing. Could you attend, please? So I just got a call from operations that uh, a person has been stabbed inside the train. Uh, so we're going down now to actually help the police and try and get trains moving as soon as possible. We've been told that there's a person that requires medical help. Uh, ambulance uh, paramedics are on the way. So the main objective at the moment is to uh, make sure that passenger gets seen to ASAP, get them off to a hospital. Luke's mission is to meet the train when it pulls into the next station and deal with the aftermath of the stabbing and its effect on the network. Uh, various trains have been trapped inside the certain blocks, so obviously there's no trains moving. We'll know what's more is going on once we get there. Meanwhile, back at Central, Buck is watching the crowds build and build. I do apologise again for the delay. We had a derailment of a light vehicle that passed through the city circle earlier in the morning. This vehicle has now been moved. City trains us thank you all for your patience and we do apologise for the delays. The milling machine has finally arrived at Central's Platform 23, where it will park until the end of the peak hour to minimise further network disruption. The lines will soon reopen, but the damage is done. Trains have been blocked for more than 40 minutes. On the city, it is crowded here. I came here 25 past six, yep. and there was a delay. Uh -huh. A man told me eight minutes. Now, yes. I understand there's a breakdown. Uh -huh. I have no problem with that. But, you know, the thing has changed maybe 20 times. Uh -huh. The signs are wrong, the trains are wrong. I mean, there's got to be a better way to do this, man. As tough as Buck has it, things are about to go from bad to worse at Central. Over on Platform 5, there's another breakdown. All right, thanks, Sasane. See you soon. The wheels have locked up on an intercity passenger train. The wheel has been dragged, uh, creating a flat spot. And the metal that's come off the wheel has been kind of spattered around the wheel red hot and welded itself to the wheel and kind of altered the shape of the wheel. Got to grind it off, can't run with it the way it is. With the train unable to be moved, Incident Rail Commander Nathan that's needs right. to get a repair team onto the tracks. All good. They've already arrived. The Rail Emergency Train Recovery Unit. 
the team that come down, Brett Shrew, they're like the NRMA for trains. Yeah, this is all the uh, heavy duty stuff, lifting trains, jacking up trains, and they also make really good coffee. <laughs> the team is ready to go, but with the chaos on platform 23, Nathan's got a problem. We've also got a few other issues in Sydney Terminal, which has mean we've had to divert traffic from platform two there. That's obviously congested a lot of the other platforms and it shortened our track access window. Put simply, they can't get onto the tracks. Incident responder Luke is close to the scene of a serious incident. A man's been stabbed on a train. The Rock and emergency services are working together coordinating the scene and reviewing the footage to guide an arrest. This is the Nim North. I need 125 held until further notice. There's been a stabbing on board. The ambulance have already been dispatched. Uh, police requesting the train to be held as a uh, crime scene. I'll go and take the Nim North standby. The train has made it to the station and the victim is safely on his way to hospital. As Luke arrives at the station, his focus turns to getting the network up and running again and making sure the police have everything they need to catch the attackers. It's going to have police go through and do a uh, mine search just to make sure there's no weapons to go into a thing with them. Yep. So just make sure there's no weapons, clothing, mobile phone, green or toys. Yep. What the goal is here is they want to isolate the crime scene. They're looking for weapons. Started off in the fifth carriage, ended up in the seventh. A forensics has just arrived. They're going to take a few photos, investigate the scene, and then we're going to try and get this train out of the section and keep passengers running on this line. So an average service on a full train capacity is around 2,000 passengers. Uh, so you could look at five trains stopped in the section, 2,000 passengers per train, uh, so there's major disruptions across the network. So the sooner we get this train out of here, the better. Tina, has your guys gone through and had a look for any weapons or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, it's been cleared as far it's as It's been I cleared? Know. Yeah, yeah, Beautiful. Yeah, 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 All right, yeah, yeah. no yeah. worries. But just as forensics are finishing up and the trains look to get running again, police make a discovery. Where one of the offenders arrested is right in front of him. OK, so all right, no worries. I'll get on to operations. To get a photo and skip down and grab it. Uh, did you want us to bring it up or you've got to go on track? No, we're going to have to get it. Go on track? Yeah. Oh, okay. A potentially vital piece of evidence is spotted on the tracks. Right, I'll um, get on to operations now. Yep. Nothing can move until it's retrieved. Yes, I can uh, confirm that my worksite location is identical. It's number five platform road between Signal Sierra Yankee number seven and the termination point of that platform. Back on Central's platform five, Nathan is trying desperately to get his repair team working on the stranded intercity. But there's too much traffic. There's a train approaching the country end of platform six here. Because of the protection arrangements that we need to work safely, and that train has to pass that protection, so we have to suspend our work. As soon as that train's in, I'll be able to talk to the signaller again and we can have a, our protection back in place. To work safely, Nathan needs clearance from the signaller that no other trains will come down the line. It's known as an ASB, or absolute signal blocking. All right, gents, ASB's re-established on that one. If you want to unload load your equipment up, this train's due out at 11.15. Imagine the wheel shaped like a great big 50 cent piece. All right, every time that flat bangs on the, the rail head, you're potentially damaging sleepers and causing all sorts of damage to the infrastructure. You all right? That's it. They need to grind the wheel back into shape, but they can only work a few minutes at a time between the trains. I'm going to have to call in about a minute to end this side. There's another train coming. They'll have to move off the track. It won't be for long. It's just so as that back end can go out. Do not run across the platform for your safety, safety numbers. 
while Nathan waits, over on platform 23, Buck is feeling the heat too. Definitely it's stressful. Look, you got, you know, you in the public eye, the eyes of the customers are all on you. They all want to get a train service and that's very understandable, you know, they don't understand exactly how our network works, but we do and, like, we feel their pain. We just want to get them on a train service into the destination ASAP. Unfortunately, we can't make trains that just appear and disappear as we feel like. Um, so it is, it's pretty frustrating. Worse still, in times of COVID, the platform is limited to 70% capacity. Barks had to make a tough call. Yeah, so now all um, access to the platform has been restricted. This is once again due to uh, the COVID restrictions. I can't, we can't afford to have this much people up here. With the platforms closed, crowds won't get worse. But there's only one way to make them get better, and that's to put them on trains. Finally, one is on the way. Train approaching on platform 22, MacArthur via airport service. Customers please remain behind the yellow line. But Buck has his concerns. This is going to be overcrowded, this train. Mm -hmm. Very overcrowded. Hopefully, hopefully we can fit as much people as we can on there, get them moving. How far is our next train? How much time do you need down there? Luke is still assisting police with their investigation into the knife attack on the train. The pressure is mounting to get the train out of the station, but it's a crime scene and detectives still have work to do. So there's a bit of clothing chucked onto the track in the forefoot. Police think it's part of the evidence. So what's happening now is I'm stopping a train using a stationary rail traffic to create a safe place. One of the backed up trains will act as a roadblock so the police can get on the track. Hey, driver, how are you? Incident Rail Commander Luke Gray. Um, what's happening is there's a bit of evidence in the forefoot down there. So forensics will grab it and then I'll get you on your way. So just hold up tight. The last of the evidence is in the bag. Now Luke is hoping the train can finally get moving. There you go. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, beautiful. So everything's starting to move on now, so hopefully the forensics have finished their side of things. We can get this train out of the way because now I've got to go and talk to the detectives. So I haven't seen five, six and seven carriage. Does that need to be cleaned at all? Is there a lot of blood through there? It will need to be cleaned. Okay. Yeah. All right. As soon as we can get this train moving, I'll get it to the cleaners. No, no. No? No. no. Still got to go oh, you still got to... process it. Okay. going to have a couple of guys go with it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it's got to go wherever it get to Flemington, and then we're going from here to Flemington. To Flemington. To all right, sounds good. Forensics has still got a little bit more investigating to do within the carriages. Obviously, once they've finished their investigations, the cleaners will come through, and then after that, can move the train back into service. Cheers, mate. On Central's platform 23, Buck fears that despite a train finally arriving, no one will get off his overcrowded platform. Just coming through the city circle, I thought there was going to be a lot of people on this train because we haven't had an airport service in nearly an hour. So I was really expecting it to be overcrowded and full, but um, it's kind of like a miracle now that, look, this it's pretty empty, so these two or 3,000 people can get on this train and move. Creek, Torella, and then all stations to Greenspeed. Almost instantly, the crowding issue is solved. Um, now that we've got a low capacity on our platforms, um, I've reopened all access on both ends, so it's good now. Uh, we just let two or 3,000 people off on our train and it's gone now. The milling machine will be taken to Everly Rail Yard for repair. Airport line trains are still running up to an hour late, but the worst of the crisis has been handled. This is why I'm here. I love working at Central because it's busy, it's the hustle and bustle. It's the place to be. Look, if I could be good at what I do and help customers get to where they need to faster, provide 
you know, faster information and request additional services from the ROC. Why not? It keeps our customers happy. Good work. All good. Hey, George. All right. Done. There's also good news on Platform 5. The intercity repairs are finished, and thankfully this breakdown didn't cause any major delays. Well, what we've done is just a temporary repair. It's just going to prevent further damage to the wheel and further damage to the track. Just going to make sure everyone's clear. Don't want to leave anyone behind. The patch-up job is enough to get the train over to the maintenance centre to complete the repairs. All they need is a driver. I'm trying to get any idea where the driver for this empty car is, middle road five and six is. Central's bad morning isn't quite over yet. Mate, what's the number for uh, New South Wales drivers? Well, what I want to know is if there's a driver coming over to take this empty cars. Uh, any idea if we're getting a driver for this 515 dash, empty cars to Flemington? You're going to walk through? There we go. There's our driver. It's just empty cars to Flemington, right? Any idea how long you'll be? The intercity is on its way, and Central can finally get back to business as usual. Yeah, job done. So, uh, yeah, I'm going home. <laughs> business is booming at Central. Of the scheduled 3,200 services today in Sydney, all but one suburban line comes through here. That means every second, three passengers pass through the gates. And two of those three are on their way to work. Also, most are on their phones. Many are buying coffee. Enjoy. And the generous few are tipping the buskers. As Friday afternoon turns to Friday evening, Sydney Trains doesn't get any less busy. Different teams are gearing up for work that can only be done at night. Got some chemical? At The Rock, they're keeping a close eye on Friday night travellers through more than 12,000 CCTV cameras. And this camera would be the best one. Nearly every millimetre of every station can be seen. You'll be on Helensburg platform two. That information helps staff keep the network running smoothly. It's also a massive resource for public safety. This is Joanne from Security. How can I help? Security Officer Joe has received a disturbing call for help from police about a woman who says she's just been assaulted on a train. Um, Mick, what's the direct number I can call you back on, please? Thanks, bye. So she's basically gotten off the service, advised she's walked out of the station, Flag police down. When driving with her husband? Okay, and that's all we got. And that's just, all we've got. Just... She's too emotional, too distressed, and they can't obtain details from other than that they're trying as much as they can. As soon as Billy can find her getting off the train, we'll get that train footage organised. Chris is the security control centre supervisor. Uh, at this stage, police are speaking to the female. Um, we're not sure what type of assault uh, has occurred. Um, and we're trying to receive a bit more information from police at this stage. We're going to do a review of footage and see if we can find the female alighting the service at uh, Wurunga and see if we can see any uh, actual offender dis disembark the service as well. The team start rewinding CCTV footage looking for the distraught woman. She's told police she was assaulted by three men, but police have given no description yet of either her or her attackers. She said she got off at Warunga Station at a little after nine. Based on that time, Joe has identified the train number as 151 Sierra. OK, so we do not know where on the train. We don't know if it's exactly the right train, and we don't know what they did. How do we identify it was 151 Sierra? Um, they gave me a time, and I checked trip planner, and I identified the train that was there at around nine o'clock. This is where security really leap into some good action, where they will start rewinding the event. So they'll identify the customer, where they got, they boarded on, and from here to there. But they obviously need a bit more detail to go on um, and to be able to do that. If they can find the woman and her attackers on CCTV, it could help the police make a quick arrest. 
Based on the information they have, they should be able to see them on the platform. But so far, there's no sign. I don't have a guide dog, cane or anything. It's completely blind. Uh, but we'll get it. We'll find them. As the evening wears on, most people who work in the heart of Sydney have gone home for a quiet one or are out making some noise. Got a radio check, one, two, three, over. Tamali is just starting his shift. Lovely, Mr. Tamali, over. Thank you. He's a customer service attendant at Central. You okay there? You need any help? Tamali's job is helping people get to where they need to go. Oh, uh, yeah, um, where are you? Platform 18. Through here, second set of stairs, just there. But Friday nights can be testing. Well, tonight, since it's a Friday, we have a, we have a Terminator service on my platform, 2425. And I'll make sure my radio works just in case there's any emergency or I need any assistance with anything. There are going to be a lot of youngins out there going out, having a good time and maybe having a bit too much of fun and um, needing an extra hand to get home. Yeah. Quick look through the platform. You never know what's happening on the platform when you come down, so it's good to have a quick look so you know what's happening. Tonight, Tamali's looking after Platform 24, which services the King's Cross nightclub district. The crowd promises to be boisterous, but all's quiet at the changeover. Uh, trains are on time? Beautiful. All right, you have a good night, huh? Thank you. Too easy. Bye. All right, I have five minutes. I'll quickly do an equipment check for the handover. On nights like tonight, there's one thing he can't be without. Down this way. Uh, gotta count them too. So what do we have? Two, four, five, six. One of the things on Friday and Saturday nights is the powders that we do put on liquids. Well, we have bags here with um, powder that we put on, say, like, any human liquids that we might encounter during the day. Especially Friday, Saturday night, we, we have a lot of vomits that can be on the train, might be on the platform, so we put these on. They soak in all the liquids, so it becomes a bit firm, so it becomes easier for us to remove. So it's, it's one of those things, very important to have, especially on Platform 24, when we have King's Cross going to and coming from. And unfortunately, what happens with those who had a little bit too much, we'll have to uh, pick up the souvenirs afterwards. So I'll make sure I have enough them to deal with those souvenirs. Yes, let the good times roll. And for now, Tamali's keeping his powder dry. But the night is young. To see what, what happens today, you can't anticipate too much. The only thing that you can always anticipate is that something's going to happen. You've got to be on your toes, be awake, and be ready to deal with any might that come. So I've got a train coming in right now. We'll um, flag it off. We'll dispatch it, and we'll see what happens next. At the Rock Security Control Centre, the team is scouring CCTV footage for a woman who told police she was assaulted on a train by three men. So far, there's no sign of her, but police have just phoned Joe with a description. She's described as wearing a bright green top Black pants and she's got blonde hair. Trying to find out now where on the train it happened. Also trying to find out what they did to her. As the security team narrows their search, police have asked to examine the train. Nimno, this is security three. I've got police radio on the line with us. Uh, run 151 Sierra. It's possible that we've had a sexual assault on board that train. Police are deeming the carriage as a crime scene and we need to know where that train is located at the moment. OK, so that train is currently at Pimble Railway Station. Yeah, we might have to take it out now. Police are requesting the service be held, um, uh, basically taken out of service. They want to uh, declare a crime scene um, and basically isolate the carriage so they can do uh, forensics on the carriage at this stage. At this stage, we're going to take 151 Sierra out. 
So we're looking at that being the service for... The woman still can't be found on CCTV. With time of the essence, Joe calls the police back. We're having trouble finding the victim. 8.55, okay, well that's, that's okay. 8.55 collected by the husband. All right, no worries. So she would have arrived at 20.55. That means we've identified the wrong train. The woman was on an earlier train than first reported. The search has to start again. Go earlier. Well, there's a train that got in at 20.55. That's when the husband picked her up. All right, give me a few minutes. I'm going to check the run number, see where that train is. But she's got off, walked out to the street, rang the husband. So it could be earlier. Well, he could have been waiting for her at the station to meet her at that time too. So true. Go from half past eight till till nine nine thirty and see if you can see anything suspicious. All right. Finally, a breakthrough. Got Nothing. three males getting off. And what are the males doing, Jeff? Yeah. It's after midnight on Platform 24 and Tamale is having the time of his life. Mostly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's time to break out the powder. Once it soaks up a bit, it's easier and we can actually then, then pick it up and clean it. Boys, it's not a playground. Tamali's job is to get people safely to where they need to go. It's part traffic cop, part PR. Take care of the boys. Take care of the boys. But with intoxicated passengers, avoiding confrontation is a challenge. Boys, what are you guys doing? Tamali's having his first stern chat of the evening. Yeah, I know you guys just mucking around and having fun, I know, but you know what? You trip or fall the wrong way, you end up there or someone else is going to hit himself and then what? Yeah? I'm sorry, boss. It's OK. Look, you guys have a good night. It's weekend. Oh, yeah. School is over, whatever. You know what I mean? But calm me down a little bit. I don't want anyone to fall off the tracks just because you guys have a bit of fun, OK? Have a good night, boys. It's how you approach him. You know, it might be fooling around, whatever, but uh, we've seen it time and time again. You have a bit of fun on a platform. You run out of space. It's a very limited space sometimes, especially if you're falling over. You end up on the tracks and the train is only due into, like, in a minute. And then, yeah, I don't want to be the person who calls their parents and says, uh, unfortunately, this is what happens. Step back from the train, please. Get that check here, come on, Joel. Get in there, rip it off. Take the best. Do it. Take it off. Tell off. Stop. Have a good night, boys. Have a good night. To the camera. See you later. I suppose around about one o'clock, when places start closing and people want to make the last train before they get home, that's when things start coming and turning up again. So a lot more intoxication as well. Yeah, mate. Can I help you? Nice smile, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah? All right, boys. Put it on your Insta, all right? Take the pictures, put it on Insta, all right? Your boy's all right. You are massive. You know what I mean? He doesn't so even go to the remote. He doesn't go to the remote. I think with, with youths, it's one of those sticking points that you get engaged, you talk, you have a chat. Nice to meet you. Hey, stay safe, yeah? Stay safe, yeah? Stay safe, yeah? You, you throw in, like, where are you guys going, having a good time. You know where they're off to. And if they're going to the cross, you know sort of what the mood is. There's always something happening on this platform that keeps me going. So there's no boredom. You can't anticipate what happens. It's nice and peace. Everything's fine. And the next moment, someone falls down the escalators. All right, boys, stay safe, yeah? Take care, have fun, enjoy. And that's what keeps me away. The buzz, I love it. Sydney trains never stops. In some ways, it's even busier at night. A vital task is cleaning every single carriage. Joanne is working a shift at the Mortdale Maintenance Centre. Every day's different. You never know what you're going to find. We've got a good crew here. We're all happy and we, we all love our job. 
Here at Mortdale, we clean Tangaras. They come in all through the night. Uh, there's eight carriages on the deep clean. There's four of us, and we all get two carriages. Hey, Mohammed. Hey, Jared. How are you? Good. How are nice you? Nice to see you. Good, thank Good you. Good to see you. What yeah. have we got tonight? You're doing deep clean, T-52, car one. Great. Let's get our stuff Let's ready. Get, yep. Joanne is meeting her cleaning partner, Mohammed, to begin their deep clean on the Tangara carriages. Mohammed's been here longer than I have been here. I've only been here about two years. How long have you been here, Mohammed? Uh, th three years. Three years? Yep. I'm, I'm a bit more fussy than the other people. I've got a brush for every occasion. I've been cleaning for a long time and I actually like to make things sparkle, so he's faster. Yeah. <laughs> Mohammed's a lot faster than me. I'm a bit, they call me slow Joe. <laughs> He's getting the gladiator, that's what we use for the floors, because as you can imagine, they get pretty grubby, because um, they move millions of people a, a day, these trains. All right, let's do it. As a safety precaution, we have to put our red flag on so that the engineers and anyone else in the station knows that we're on the train. So, Mohammed, what do you want to do? I do all the windows, I clean the seats, yep. and I do all the runners. OK, cool. I'll do the backs of the seats, the feet, the lights, do all the touch points. And then we can do the floor together with the yellows. Yes, that's fine, absolutely cool. fine. These trains carry tens of thousands of people a day. Joanne's mission is to remove every trace of them. You find a lot of, you know, wallets and that they go to lost and found and they try and um, find the, the owners of them. You find pens and uh, syringes. Yeah, it can be dangerous. We find syringes now and then. Once I found one stuck up in the light up there that was really hard to get out, but... We're, we're pretty careful and we do have sharp containers to put them in if we do find them. My mum was a cleaner and my nan was a cleaner, so I don't know if we can beat a uh, gene or in the blood, but it appears to be. <laughs> Before this, I was um, a mother. And now that my children are raised, I did, decided to come and get a job. But before that, I used to uh, clean aeroplanes for ANSET the 747s, and I was in first class, so I really, really had to be good at what I was doing. So I think that's probably why I'm fussy here. Yeah, no, I actually love cleaning. It's, 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 it's meant for me. This is how we get all the stuff out of the seats, all the crumbs that have been sitting in there. And then we have these to get down there and pull out anything that might be sitting down there, coins, M&Ms, Skittles, even the occasional cigarette. A guy was cleaning the silvers down here one night and he got a fish hook in his finger. Someone had put a fish hook down there. So, um, yeah, people do some strange things on the trains. Last thing on this carriage is the floor. Then they move to the driver's cabin. The driver's like the king of the train and if he's not happy with the way the train's clean, he won't take it out. So we've got to make sure it's up to standard. Okay, now that we've finished the train, we've got to take our red flag off. And that way, the maintenance guys knows that the train's clean and the driver knows and we've done our job. Joanne and Mohammed have finished, but that's not quite the end. Each carriage will be scored by a supervisor to ensure it's up to standard. I think we'll get a pretty good score. Hopefully. <laughs> Got Nothing. three males getting off. And what are the males doing, Jeff? They got off and left the station. Okay, are they uh, suspicious or anything? Or possibly it depends what carriage it happened in. We're not sure. At the Rock, three men have been recorded on CCTV leaving Warunga Station, but they're quickly ruled out as suspects because there's still no sign of the victim. It's not the right time. It's got to be earlier. Police say the woman is distraught and she's changed the estimate of her arrival time at the station for a third time. But still, the security control centre team can find nothing. I think she's given us the wrong station. If anyone can find where she gets off. We've been guessing since about 10 o'clock. Tony has taken over as night supervisor. Transport's supposed to be safe for its passengers, so we definitely need to do everything we can to ascertain what happened, maybe even affect an arrest tonight of these um, offenders. Joe calls police again, looking for clues. 
we are really struggling. Um, the 2040 time that we originally identified the third time round, um, we don't see her getting off the train at Warunga. And now we're checking Waitara and Warawi. Um, I've actually got about six people looking at cameras at the moment and we have got nothing. If she's affected by any substance which has caused her to not remember where she is, it could have been much earlier. I think it's happened off rail. Train crew would have reported it. The, the injury she's got, someone would have seen it. I'm stumped. I'm Customers on platform 25, next service arriving will terminate at Central. Please do not attempt to board this train. It's late in the shift. After a night of dealing with overexcited passengers, Tamale is starting to flag. What? What is it? What is it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Distractions. Love it. But there's one more important job he needs to take care of at the end of the night. Terminating service. OK. So whenever I see there's a grey mark train, it means basically that there's a train coming that is in service that gets taken out of service, so it's terminating here. We'll make sure that everyone gets off the service. Excuse me, terminating service. In a complex jigsaw, trains are terminated at the stations they're due to start from in the morning, and maintenance is carried out in the downtime. If we have anyone left over on that train, might panic, gets claustrophobic, um, all sorts of other issues might arise, so we'll make sure that there's no one on the train. No, no, you need to get off. Last stop. We've had customers in that unfortunate event who fell asleep and they were lying across the free seater and we couldn't see them. Terminating service. Yeah. Please wait for the next train, 10 minutes. Or they got into panic and started smashing the doors. So it might become even a bigger issue. Just from um, not seeing someone running behind you joining a service. We try our best to make sure that there's no one being carried over at any time. Yeah, you want to avoid any, any dramas. Terminating service? Yeah, sorry. That's fine. Last stop. That's OK. Next train, 10 minutes. You're welcome. At The Rock, it's been the longest of nights for Joe. But a call from police finally solves the mystery. Disregard, she got an Uber. In her confused state, the woman thought she took a train, but actually never did. And our victim never travelled by train. Um, she used an Uber service, and there is no further action required by Sydney trains. I'm speechless. I have a headache. It doesn't get more serious than an actual assault, especially of this nature. We would have liked to, you know, to think that should anything like that have happened on, a, on our trains, somebody would have seen something, said something, uh, whether, you know, railway staff or passengers. Um, so we'll leave that with the police now. We'll just, um, yeah, it's case closed from our end. Oh, my God. I can't tell you the frustration and the agony you go through, because you know you can find something that's happened. But when it's happened and not at your location and you don't know that, you're chasing your tail, the frustration is overwhelming and it's physically exhausting. Traumatic, but nothing, a, a strong coffee and a lot of chocolate won't fix. Friday night is over, and Joanne and Muhammad have aced it. They scored 6.7 out of 7 for their cleaning job. At the end of the, the night, uh, there's not much uh, energy left in the batteries. I'm probably running on 1%. So I go back and have a cup of tea and wait for knock-off time, and I don't have any trouble sleeping when I get home. Those newly cleaned trains will soon be out on the tracks again in the early dawn. You guys cool? Yeah, no worries. And Tamali has seen off the last of the stragglers and will soon be heading home himself. Cheers, bro. Exciting day. Funny crowd. Happy crowd. We've got a few dramas here and there, but we dealt with it nicely. Looks awesome. That's, that's why I love working here.
So it's, it's been a good range, keeps me on my toes, keeps me busy, keeps me occupied. You know, there's always a bit of sweat involved, but um, I'm sure a lot of customers enjoyed themselves tonight, and so did I. This is what Central is about.